gentlemen, it is that time once again for the first time in a long time. This is arguably entertaining on the Podzilla 1985 Network. I am your host and moderator, Double H, and for the first time since April, we are coming to you with a brand new pop culture mashup. Uh, before we get into the specifics, let's go ahead and introduce our guest for tonight, uh, who will be introducing and uh, then defending uh, particular champions in tonight's fight, which for the record is all taking place in the stars. It is all very extraterrestrial tonight. Uh, defending the thing, John Carpenter's The Thing, will be uh, first timer here on Arguably Entertaining, Stephen Bright. Hello. Nice to be here. And defending the uh, the Xenomorphs. I was going to say Ridley Scott, but I guess it could be Ridley Scott. Uh, 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 John, uh, not John. Help me out, Shannon. Cameron. James. James. James there James. he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Xenomorphs uh, from the Alien films uh, is Shannon Young. I told Steven, let's have fun with this. But what I meant to do was to put him in a false sense of security because I'm going to put my thumb <laughs> in his goddamn eye tonight. Oh, um, no. So how apropos so, Hunter that we're doing a right. show about this right after the Midwest Conference of the Unknown, which was fantastic, yes. by the way. Yes, it was. Yeah, we have a, a new I want to believe coming your way very soon in the near future, possibly yeah. next week um, to talk about all the greatness from the conference over the weekend. I want to say a big thanks to everybody who helped put that together and everybody who came out to enjoy it with us, including um, and looking, including Steven's sister. Who yes. wrote the play that Hunter was in. Yes, that is correct. And the upcoming serial versions of that as well. It will continue in the near future. More more installments of At the Door are Which, coming soon. Well, last, I did not know that, actually. Last, really yeah, yeah the sequel's already written, apparently, the next one. I won't, I won't interrupt anymore, but I do want to mention that Brianna Bright, who is Steven's sister and a fantastic author, uh, we talked to her over the weekend. We are going to have her on the show in the next couple of weeks to talk about that and her work. We're very excited. Steven, I, I'm yes, obviously yes. extending an invitation to you to be on that show. I think that would be very fun. I mean, that show sounds like that's all Brie. I don't want to <laughs> bring that down. Bring it down. <laughs> Fuck, never mind. I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> Well, that remember, like, you, uh, you were tired of me. I'm tired podcast. of you, Stephen. That's <laughs> what I've heard. I got back to him. I think, uh, I think that would be good to, to meld into I Want to Believe. I think she'd be a good guest for I Want to Believe, actually. I agree. I mean, I, we should I do like a whole, I think, a whole uh, yeah. thing there. Yeah, well, if we can get it for next week, I mean, that'd be even great. I'll, I'll shoot a message to her. Yes. She finally so, accepted my friend request after about six years. Yeah, she doesn't do things. <laughs> well, until you know she wants to promote stuff. So, Smartest way to do it. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, tonight's arguably entertaining, by the way, is is not just we're not just coming back randomly, right? The last episode we did was toward the end of April, right toward the beginning of the summer. The best um, episode, late spring, early summer. It, yeah, it was it was me and Cody uh, defending Indiana Jones and James Bond against each other, respectively, so with good. Shannon as a guest moderator. Hated it. Uh, it was very intense. It was <laughs> wild. Um, what we're doing tonight is is an or- organic. Uh, thing this came about because uh well I, I let you guys tell the story there's a reason that you two well, are defending these particular uh elements of pop culture so steven and i are both big fans of both these films but we saw i saw a it was shutter uh, which is a great streaming service that plays you know primarily horror and sci-fi stuff and they had posted a facebook message and it's that guy it's that guy sitting behind the table and it says the whatever changed That's my Crowder. mind Steven Crowder or whatever I his name don't is. Don't want to say it. Yeah. He's a, he's a piece of he's garbage, piece. but we're just using the meme. But it, it said something to the extent of the thing is the best um something like the best contact alien movie or whatever. I forget the exact wording of it, but so Steven and I were playing games that night and we started discussing it and we just got in this big full on discussion about who would win in a fight between the thing and the alien. And yeah. uh and Hunter, being the opportunist that he is, was like, <laughs> Hey, 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 it's, just, it's the thing we do nowadays. Save it for the show, guys. Let's just yeah. save it for the show. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the other thing to note about tonight's Arguable Entertaining is that this is the, the debut. This is episode seven of Arguable Entertaining, and this is going to be the debut episode of our lightning round version of this game. So typically, uh, this show takes between an hour and a half and two hours to record, and it usually includes five key segments uh, that are our contestants i guess for lack of a better term our, our debaters will be arguing for this version because a lot of well first of all because it kind of came together last minute and because a lot of the the previous categories really just don't work for this kind of fight because it's mostly about the head-to-head uh we're cutting it down to three 
and we're adjusting the time a little bit. So this is going to go by a little faster than it does normally. Still going to get all the good stuff in there. Still going to have plenty of time to argue those points. I like this um, format. But okay. it's it's down and dirty. It's yeah. very much, it, it spurs completely out of that head-to-head fight. Yeah. And so that's what we're mostly focusing on. So the way this is going to work, we're going to skip the opening statements. We're going to skip the closing statements. There are going to be three uh, categories, which will be in order. The canon, where we're going to talk about um, key media for both of these these characters in this fight. The mainline movies, right? These are both primarily uh, film characters. I keep saying characters, and I know that's the right term, but it feels weird. Um, so mainly the films in which they have starred, they'll debate which is better uh, on either side of, of those arguments. Uh, there will also be the other stuff. That's where we're going to strictly uh, corral the the books, the TV shows, the video games, all the other non-film uh, versions of this and then finally uh, is, again, the, the main reason that we're here, the head-to-head, the who would win in a fight between. Now, it is important to note, as we always do, that when it comes to that final category, it is your job to convince me that this is a winning scenario for your um, particular chosen side of, of this debate. So you do not have to take into account anything that your opponent sets in stone there. Uh, it's always best to work within the the realms of you know what has been established in their canon, uh, but the goal is that they win this fight any way that you deem necessary. Uh, and then we'll talk about how those two versions of that match up afterward. Make sense. Sound good. Yes. And Shannon okay. will definitely win. He's very persuasive. <laughs> yeah, dude, You would be surprised. I don't have a great track record here because um, again, a lot of the time, the people that I go against, they take it very seriously. They come in with, all kinds of shit, and I really do this just off the top of my head. Every time I'm on Arguably Entertaining, every argument I make is based on just my knowledge that I have. I don't research. I don't get you know specifics. I just want to come in and have fun, which is why I think, and I will continue to think, that Hunter versus Cody, James Bond and, and Indiana Ooh. Jones was the I'm best tired. the best episode we've ever done <laughs> and if you think that hunter has the easy job just sitting back and hearing all this no it's it's rough it's he horrible. knows now it's horrible <laughs> yeah um i do want to also quickly point out Stephen, that's very much uh, a who's line situation the rules are made up and the points don't matter right <laughs> so other yeah. than me other than me cutting <laughs> you off at a certain time because you're unopposed for your specific argument and then there's the cross exam um, mm-hmm. really, you know, you could win all three categories and still lose the overall thing. Yes. So it, it, it's, it's yes. It, the end decision like will, it. will be a totally separate deal. So, I like it. okay. Just so again, what we're going to do and talk about yeah, a movie yeah. that you love. Yeah. yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. We're going to do five minutes for each, uh, unopposed argument and then five minutes for cross exam for each of these categories. So that's why I say we should be in and out within about an hour or so. Um, with that said, who wants to call this coin flip? Steven. Steven, call it it uh, now. Tails. All right, the coin is heads. So, Shannon, do you want to go first, or do you want Steven to go first? I'll go first. That way Steven can get an idea of how this all goes. Normal- yeah, yeah. yeah, normally I would let you go first just so I can get an idea of what you're going to say, but I want you to kind of get a, a feel for it. So. Okay. so that will be the case then for each element. <laughs> Shannon will go first, Steven will go second each time, and then there will be a cross-examination. Right. Um, during your, your initial argument, uh, it is on a post, so your opponent is not allowed to chime in. Sound good? Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right, then let's get to it with the canon. Shannon, we're going to talk about um, the film's in which the Xenomorphs have starred, have appeared, whatever is best for your argument. I'm going to put five minutes on the clock whenever you're ready. All right, and, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, let Steven know that when it comes to the canon and the movies and stuff like that, we're basically arguing, in this case, whose movie is better, who's the better character, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So, yeah, I am ready. Okay. <clears throat> your time starts now. All right, first off, Steven, were you aware... That 12 days ago, The Thing's lawyer sent me a complete digital copy of his cell phone. <laughs> and I have all of The Thing's texts, which clearly state that Alien is a superior film. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, thank, thank you. Thank the you. lawyer? Thank you. I wanted to get that in there immediately. Uh, before anyone else took that joke. So, this is a hard fight for me because when we were talking about who was going to represent who, I, I didn't know which side to pick. Steven picked the thing. That kind of made it easier for me. If more people had joined in, Steven and I would maybe have teamed up because I also love the thing. But I, I 
even though I love the thing and it is my favorite horror, like sci-fi horror film, not going to lie to you. I think altogether the alien series is a better series. It's a better film series. Um, if you go back to the original alien movie from the eighties, I believe late seventies, early eighties, I forget off the top of my head. I want to say seventies. It, it re- was 82 it somewhere in that range. I think so. Uh, no thing was 82. Cause that was the year I was born. Anyway, shut up. Oh, um, okay. My <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting him slide for a little bit for now. It's okay, I don't mind. Uh Alien was basically a haunted horror it was a haunted house movie in space. There had been plenty of horror films, plenty of haunted house movies. Alien was especially uh revolutionary. It it was one of the first I believe one of the first serious horror sci-fi films that were ever made. Uh it was directed by Ridley Scott, who is obviously one of the most prolific and uh, intense directors of all time. It spawned a series of sequels, which all did their own thing, including the, the very direct sequel aliens starring Sigourney. Well, they both stars. We'll get to that. We'll get that a little later. Uh, Aliens was, even though it, it, it diverted from the horror aspects of the first film, it completely reinvented it. And that, that's one thing I think this has it against, the thing movie because if you watch the thing and then you watch the sequel which is called the thing you'll see that it's it's a it's also a prequel sequel situation but the movies are very very similar in tone they're very similar in style it's kind of like watching it, it's not a reboot obviously but they're very very similar to a fault in some ways i think whereas aliens is a completely new take on the series it is an action film it is uh it has some of the most quotable one liners in cinema history thanks to bill paxton almost entirely it turned sigourney weaver's character ripley from the sole survivor of the original film into a legitimate iconic female ass kicker. One of the greatest female characters of all time. Um, it made the xenomorphs scary in a whole new way because whereas the first one you had one xenomorph that was terrorizing the space station or the, you know, the spaceship. Now you had an entire army of them that had taken over an entire colony and was turning them into these creatures. Uh, and then <laughs> Uh, we have to talk about the other movies. I have to talk about the sequels so Steven doesn't use them against me. Alien 3 is a good film. It is a good film. I will defend it till the day I die. The director's cut is even better. I really like Alien 3. I don't care what anyone says. Alien Resurrection is trash. It, it had Joss Whedon's name on it, which you think would be a boon, but it really wasn't. It had Ron Perlman, which again should be great. Winona Ryder, which should be great. But the tone of that film was so inconsistent with the rest of the franchise it it was just bad. And I don't even know if I want to count Prometheus and Alien Covenant because they do not represent the series. I think when you're talking about Alien, you have to include them because they're part of the film series too. Yes, but you really want to focus on Alien and Aliens and to an extent Alien 3. They are the quintessential sci-fi horror films. And as much as they've even tried to replicate their own success they have kind of failed and everyone else that has tried to replicate it has failed as well. Alien and aliens are revolutionary films. The rest are just kind of there, but it doesn't take away from the fact that those original two films may be pound for pound in their own unique ways, the greatest in their genre. And I will concede the rest of my time. Okay. You have 30 seconds left. You sure? Yeah, I'm good. Wow. Okay. Are, damn, that was better than That's I thought. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Four thirty. Almost. Ooh. Almost four thirty on the dot. All right, Stephen, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I think I can <laughs> make this work. <laughs> it's fine. You're good. All right. Yeah. Whenever you start, I'll just start the timer. How about that? Okay. Fair enough. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> gather my thoughts here. So I, I did appreciate Shannon going into the the prequel sequel because that is a point of contention with the series. You have basically the one movie that you have with this entire franchise, basically, with that version anyway. You still have the thing from another world that was a remake uh, that was loosely based on the novella uh, by uh, the name who goes there. But with John Carpenter's The Thing, he took the uh, uh, communist paranoia that was very prominent in that Cold War era. He literally put it in the Arctic to like that symbolism, that paranoia of who is against 
you know, the group, who's trying to sabotage everyone and, you know, basically just take over. And John Carpenter's The Thing perfectly encapsulates that uh, feeling, that terror of, you know, who is out to get me? Who is here that is going to basically destroy the world? That is the uh, premise. That is the uh, whole uh mystery behind this uh alien terror and it's it's uh, a good thing with the uh paranoia aspect with uh you don't know who is here to uh dis- uh take destroy the group basically and uh with subsequent watch uh oh, reviewings god i am stumbling over my words it's okay <laughs> you're done you're good you have plenty of time okay you're only, so, you're only a minute and a half in Okay, fair enough. So, with subsequent <clears throat> reviewings, you can keep uh, look out for those little details that are in the movie where, like, maybe a key was dropped on the floor to where anyone can pick it up to get to the blood supply to uh, destroy the blood so that way they couldn't do proper tests to test for the alien uh, uh, creature. The thing. <laughs> as it may. And, uh... Like, you keep watching, you got to ask yourself, who gets turn at which point? Who, uh, when is he the thing in this scene? Is he still human? What's, uh, how is this group going to, like, handle the situation? And the, uh, reviewings, it's just, it's terrifying every time because you don't know what to expect that first time. And every, like, scare isn't cheap or you know manufactured it is rear like the only jump scare like i won't spoil anything just happens once in the movie and everything else is just pure atmosphere and tension and it just invites a reviewing multiple times like i've seen this movie probably over half a dozen like half a dozen over like 20 times and i still want to go back to see like what details that have been like left unturned to get the information there. And John Carpenter, like being a masterpiece, uh, masterful with his craft with the Halloween movies and uh, whatever, uh, the fog they Mm -hmm. live always encapsulates that like political statement of, uh, you know, the world uh, during his era. And the thing I think perfectly, like in cases encapsulates that mood that he was feeling at that time. And I will concede the rest of my time there. Okay. You have just yeah, over I feel a like I've been in case you have anything else you want to add. Uh say nothing off the top of my head, so Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, then we'll pause it there and we're gonna jump into this cross examination, meaning you both have five minutes uh to kind of talk about each other's arguments here. This is an opportunity to make some some uh, opposing points to things that your opponent said. These and a, uh, a chance to defend maybe or elaborate on some things that you think of uh, for your argument along the way so five minutes cross-examination is going to start right now all right first off i don't appreciate the fact that steven is bringing up uh john carpenter's other films that's not fair <laughs> well, that, that's, that's fine that's we're not talking about those we're that's talking a, about that's a cheat movies. code that's a you cheat that's, code i'm sorry i wasn't thinking about that john carpenter <laughs> john carpenter is easily the greatest horror director of all time even jordan peele says that as we know recently <laughs> um, but since he brought it up i do want to mention that ridley scott is he's no slouch he's done a couple movies you might have heard of uh blade runner Legend, Thelma and oh, Louise, gosh. <laughs> which I, I just found out was directed by Ridley Scott. Um, wow. <laughs> anyway, uh, Stephen, I'm gonna be honest with you. When you started, I was like, "Oh man, he's he's not gonna do great." But then you really you really pulled it together, and yeah, I I, I shouldn't be complimenting you, but I do want to compliment <laughs> you on the way you presented the 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 tension from those movies. Because one thing that I did not I kind of went over the films that are in the library, but I didn't really talk about what made the first one great because mm-hmm. I, Aliens is the one everyone loves. But I think Alien is really the better film because the tension in that movie is cranked up to 11 compared to the other Alien films. Honestly, yeah, I feel like the Alien in the first film was like the most lethal, honestly. Yeah. Like, and the I understand the second, yeah, the scariest. 
honestly. Yep. Was but, this uh, was this as scary as the, scary as the thing? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, i guess coming back to um uh, i guess your <laughs> points that you made uh which uh you you have a whole series dedicated to you know your your xenomorph whereas i only have the one movie but i feel like i honestly the first movie could just stand on its own against the thing but I still think the thing beats it out just for the sheer, like, I the terror I felt between the thing versus the xenomorph. Like, it's just, I think it's just immensely more terrifying I, I think in it, that situation. You keep saying that uh, you have the one movie. You don't, brother. You got the thing from outer space starring James Arness from Gunsmoke fame. I've got a whole video on this that I posted well, see, on Podzilla 1985. That's not the version we're talking about. Well, we're talking about everything in that in that uh, space. And if it's the thing, it's the uh, thing, man. Yeah, you know, that's, so that's fair. now it's the thing from another world, though. That's true. Thank you. That's true. That's true. See, you got me on that one. <laughs> um, and and as if you listen to that episode, that thing I did on Podzilla 1985, you will hear me talk about how the thing from another world, starring James Arness, was a huge blockbuster at that time. It it was very mm-hmm. well regarded. Yeah, the, the thing is, you know arguably the greatest sci-fi horror movie of all time but then you have the prequel which i didn't hate i thought it was pretty good but one thing that that movie had that i i think you can put up against any of the alien films is it had that damn cg everything in the thing prequel was cg'd you put that mm-hmm. up against the aliens all the if alien effects looked fantastic the prequels uh, for the thing looked awful. Like I love the prequel, except for the fact that everything is CG and it is such a slap in the face and, and, and a real betrayal of the thing from the eighties, because that was all practical effects. Um, whereas alien, it was consistent up until Prometheus. And I don't want to talk about that (laughs) because that, that doesn't have alien in the name. Therefore it doesn't count. I will give you the prequel was a lot of retreading with, uh, you know, the uh, like it could be any one of us. The tests that they come up with to determine who is and who might not be the thing. I did like the at least with the prequel, they came up with a test that wasn't conclusive. Like, yeah. OK, you could still uh, like you're for sure good. We're not sure of you. But you could still still you could still be human, and you know that was the thing is like I'm I'm uh, regarded as a threat because I have good uh, teeth like I brush my teeth like I did enjoy that little bit. <laughs> this, this I think this is a hard one to pick because the alien and thing are both top notch. Like this isn't one of those like. It's not like Bond versus Indiana Jones, where you've got two very, I mean, iconic series, but they're they're so different from each other. The Thing mm-hmm. and Alien both are sci-fi horror films, so it really comes down in this category to which is the better representation of its field. And I think that pound for pound, Alien is superior to it just in the way they took this. They're so similar, too. Time. Oh, damn it. Yeah, I was going to my best point. <laughs> five minutes. Fuck. I know. I know. Um, well, this is going to make you feel better. I am going to give this one to you anyway. Yes. Uh, and and really, as I feel it prescient to mention that the thing is also legitimately one of my favorite movies, uh, especially horror movies. Uh, but again, it really does come down to just that 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 pound for poundage. It is one hundred percent the the uh, the numbers game, and and ironically, um, you know that's kind of how Xenomorphs do things, right? They <laughs> they win with the numbers game, and, yeah. and this is what it comes down Legit, to. Alien like, and Aliens together <laughs> are just a back to back. It's a one two punch, punch. like yeah. the two Terminator mm-hmm. movies. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like putting those two together. Absolutely. Um, whereas the thing does have a lot of again that that James Arness. Uh, that original film was a huge blockbuster. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's you know well um, remembered. I guess for lack of a better term, it wasn't you know, a blockbuster the, back in the day because it bombed <clears throat> hard. But the the eighties, the John Carpenter, the thing that one uh, is is one hundred percent a masterpiece. Yeah. But you're going up against two equally well received films and two very different films in Alien mm-hmm. and Aliens. 
Uh, and so it's just difficult to overcome that. But it, it is it is close. Let's say I would be remiss in acting like it's not close. All right, let's move on. Category number two. This is the other stuff. So we're going to move away from those films, at least from the mainline films. Uh, again, if you want to discuss things like Alien vs. Predator or other uh, thing-related uh, media, you're welcome to do so. Books, TVs, video or TV shows, video games, uh, any other appearances of these characters outside their key canon. That's what we're looking for uh, discussion about here. Shannon, are you ready? I'm for the record. I'm making a special edition po- of logo, a show logo for this one, where the two guys arguing <laughs> are replaced by an a xenomorph <laughs> head and Wolford Brimley. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, That's phenomenal. I'm good to go. All right, when you start, I'll start. All right, here we go. You ready? Here we go. Right, here we go. Here we go. All right, here we go. Okay. All right, Stephen, All right, you are absolutely boned on this one because when it comes to alternate media, I don't even think you're going to be able to say that that the thing stands any chance. Just video games alone. The thing had one video game, which from what I understand was a pretty good video game. But Alien, oh my God, from the Alien arcade game from uh, Capcom, which was fantastic. The, sky, the Predator versus Alien. Can we, all right, side note, and you can keep counting time. Can we count Alien versus Predator or is that... Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's aliens are in it. So yes. Seen in. Yeah. Then boy, did you just shoot yourself in the foot. Your lawyer really did hand me over a bunch of stuff because <laughs> <laughs> Alien versus Predator, the arcade game, is is uh, one of the best side scrolling beat 'em ups of the 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 nineties, late eighties, early nineties. Of and it's not just that; it's also the. Uh, <sighs> Okay, personal story. Everybody loves when I tell personal stories. When I was younger, the system I always wanted and never got was the Atari Jaguar. Now, I know in hindsight, it was an awful system. It was a huge mistake. But the Atari Jaguar had one game that I wanted more than anything. And I think it was just called Alien vs. Predator. I'm going to look that up real quick to make sure I'm not wrong on this. Um, so I know I'm counting against my time here, and that's okay because I... I don't have a lot to <laughs> say other than bragging. Yeah, so Alien vs. Predator was on Jaguar, and it was a first-person shooter where you could play as the different, you know, the alien, the predator, the the space marine, the colonial marine, and it was just the coolest-looking thing I'd ever seen. The alien games in general have always been so good, except for, like, one or two, admittedly. Uh, the Alien Isolation game is one of the best... Um, subtle horror... I, I don't know what kind of genre you would put it in. It's that... It's that horror game where you don't have any way to really fight back against the creature, so you're just hiding from it. You talk about tension. It ran, it wrenches it up to a thousand. Uh, there's the Alien games. Alien also has one of the... Uh, you're going to give me bonus points for this one, Hunter. And yes, I am tipsy. Alien 3 <laughs> on Super Nintendo is widely regarded as one of the better movie licensed games for that era, right? And the reason you're going to give me bonus points to this is because who made that game? LJN. It's one of the few LJN games <laughs> that were legitimately good. Um, th- the video games are my big selling point on this because if there's an alien book, I've never read it. I'm going to be honest with you. If, <laughs> if there's a TV show, I've never seen it. All I know are the video games. And when it comes to the video games, they are clearly superior. Then you talk about the toys. Oh my God, the toys. It's like Batman. You remember or in Spider-Man, when you were a kid, you would go to Walmart and you would see all the Spider-Man toys. You were like, "Who? The, where the fuck did they get fishing Spider-Man or Arctic action Batman? It was the same thing with Alien. There was a new Alien toy every other day because you could just make so many variations of it. It's kind of like the thing in the sense that it takes over the host of, of it, who it's implanted into and kind of becomes them. So you have all of these like uh, different versions of the character. The, and I know this because of Bob, because Bob has a collection of those fucking things. I don't have a single one, but I've seen the ones he has, and they look fantastic. So in short, the Alien video games are really, really good, and I've conceded my time. <laughs> All right, with a minute and a half left to go, Shannon's out of gas. Uh, Steven, Steven, are you ready? I can't handle it. As much as, as, much as I can handle it. All right, when you start, I'll start. Jump into it when you're ready. Um, So The Thing video game, Hunter, is a fantastic (laughs) sequel to The Thing movie. It is actually endorsed by John Carpenter as the sequel to his movie. It's that that well-received. He loved it that much. He gave it his blessing as, yes, this is the sequel to my movie. 
And so you have that same tension, same atmosphere of you don't know who is the enemy. You still have the little minions that run around that, you know, you shoot the regular, you know, shooter horror game. But you still have that uh, tension with the companion system where you have to actually find test kits to test your own crew to make sure they aren't going to turn on you in the middle of a gunfight. And you have to burn them. You have to make sure that you have the fuel to uh, run the flamethrower and kill them properly. Otherwise, they will come back and come after you later on at the level. It is a fantastic video game. You have other media, which is the board game, The Thing, uh, Infection at Outpost 31, which, Shannon, we still need to play some point it's true. As for one game night. But that one is another like hidden, uh, hidden enemy game. It is fantastic if you know anything about Among Us or any of that trend with that little genre of video games that's basically that but in board game form you get to go to the kennel you get to go to the office you get to go to the goddamn bathroom and you can uh get jumped by the thing at some point it is a fantastic game night and we again we just have to play it and then you also have the comic book series which they're labeled the thing from another world because of little uh, trademark issues with Marvel with their thing comic, but that's Bastards. besides the point. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, there is a the, technically the canon sequel is the video game, which is from John Carpenter's blessing. But they did continue the story with McCready and with Childs. Uh, it's still an Arctic, but it's bigger it's more bombastic kind of like how the alien sequel was where it was just action instead of horror which the comic still tried to dang, uh kind of uh kind of balance that line in between the horror and action aspect which i think it did a good job there are some hiccups here and there with the story but overall it's great then you have the climate of fear with actually finally change the you know climate that they're in instead of an arctic uh wasteland it is in a lush tropical jungle where it is more the situation is more dire more dangerous because you have bigger population cattle that could be infected which comes into play it's later on in the story the main the comic book lines with climate of fear and the thing from another world are just fantastic media. And it, I will always defend this quality over quantity, quality over quantity. You get what you get, but what you get is a quality work. And I can see my time. Okay. Three and a half minutes apiece for you two. Five minutes nice. is what you're going to have for cross examinations. Um, and I'm going to step aside for this. So five minutes on the clock. And your time starts now. How dare you? How dare you bring up <laughs> all of these fantastic things uh, from the from the alternate you space? You didn't even mention the Aliens board game. I didn't know I it have existed. That. I have that. Well, we need I'll, to also play that. I'll tell you what. You <laughs> didn't bring up the, fa the thing that you mentioned in the opening, that the thing was a novella. It was based on a classic story called, what was it, Who Goes There? Who goes there? Yeah. And then uh, why am I saying this for you? <laughs> I don't know. And then you also have Frozen Hell, which they found lost manuscripts of that original novella and added la pages, like almost a full chapter. Did worth you of just say la pages? La pages. <laughs> I, look, man. All yeah, I've got. I think it's actually L pages. La pages. <laughs> <laughs> All I've got is the video games, okay? But the video games are so good. I The video games and the toys are literally the only expanded universe stuff I know for Alien. But uh, let's not overlook the fact I that the, the, the comic books... You, yeah. you're, you're, oh, you can interrupt me. You can tell me shut the fuck up if you want. This is cross-examination. <laughs> I'm just cross saying, imagine a toy for the thing. Ah, that dog thing. 
I would Which buy I do that. have the figurines. <laughs> yeah, I do have those little like figurines with that board game. You have the dog thing, the head thing, and then the big monster thing. Oh, the head thing was incredible. Uh, mm-hmm. But but I think, you know, the expanded, talking about expanded universe of the comics, I didn't mention some of the Alien comics. The Alien actually has a very long, I think, Dark Horse comic series that, that they did. They may have switched over by now. But that comic series, I believe, it may have been a book, but I think it was that comic series, is where it originally started the um, Alien vs. Predator series, which it took a life of its I own. I remember that. Mm-hmm. A- Alien vs. Predator, I think, is one of the first crossover series in of uh, you know history in, in entertainment like that. Of course, now you have your Freddy versus Jason, uh, Sharknado versus uh, Sharktopus, and stuff like that. That's a real movie, by the way. But Alien versus Predator mm-hmm. was one of the very, very first, and it combined these iconic characters from two different franchises and put them together. So let's not overlook that. Um, and also, have you played the video games? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, with you. That's true. Um, yes, I mean, shit, we're just we're playing Alien. Fireteam. Fireteam, thank you. Fireteam Elite. Yeah, Fireteam we're, Elite. We're not playing the thing, Fireteam Fire Team Elite. Fireteam. I'm on it. I'll <laughs> take care of it. <laughs> and then uh, I guess I should mention John Carpenter is with talks with uh, whoever owns the the rights to the thing. Uh, Paramount, Paramount, I guess. But uh, he is going to be producing the movie that is going to be closer to how the novella was story wise. No, oh, no, I, I don't guess. want them. To, I don't want them to remake it. Look, I know. Honestly, <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I mean, they already tried with the prequel. Let's not do this again, please. Which wasn't like, even bad. with John Carpenter, man, it the, wasn't bad. The prequel was pretty good. It just wasn't it, again. It wasn't how aliens was. It wasn't like a new thing. It was yes, a retread. It was just the same movie again, but Which, that's not what we're here to talk about. I'm here to tell you about why, like I've never played. All right, I've never played the the thing video game, but I'm sure it's terrible. Mother, <laughs> that's an opinion. And Stephen will concede this time. No, <laughs> <laughs> it is an opinion that's wrong, Shannon. It is a very good game. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> I think you're wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to, while we're arguing this, I'm trying to get this damn image to work and it's driving me crazy. Um What are you pulling up? You have about a minute left for the record. Oh god, because I really Until can't, you're both done. I I can, hey, t- honestly, I can tell you more about the Alien video games. My, my mom, when I was a kid, I wanted so badly to get a computer because my mom's friend had a computer and he was playing Doom on it. And she finally got me a computer. She, You know what she got me? She got me a Commodore 64. It was like when I asked for a PlayStation and she got me a Genesis. God rest her soul. Mm-hmm. Um, I played Alien on the Commodore 64. That's how far back the Alien series goes. Alien, you say quality over quantity over quality over quantity. I disagree. McDonald's and and uh, other you know Star Wars has proven that it's all about quantity and Alien has <laughs> Alien in mass. But is it good, Shannon? It's hot and it's it ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's gonna do it. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, all right. Well, here's where I get to reveal a little something. Uh, I'm gonna drop a I'm gonna drop a link in the text for the group chat here. Here, uh, the the text only for babies. You'll see here. This is uh, a link that takes you to uh, cheats for the thing on the PS2. Um, and if you look closely, there's only two submitted ones. Go ahead and tell me the name of who submitted that first one, if oh. you would, please. Oh, hold on, I got ad block. Hold on, I'm going to it real quick. <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible site. Just oh, for God. the record, GameRevolution.com. It's an awful site. But uh, there's there's two. It's the one about uh, uh, forcing squad mates to do stuff for you that you need done. Damn it! I gotta turn my ad block off to see it. <laughs> You're just gonna have to tell me. How about I go take a screenshot for you yes. really quick? I don't yes, want this please. to take too terribly long. But um, see, I'm on a Mac, and so my Mac's like, I ain't gonna get shit. I didn't do fucking shit. <laughs> um, let me let me go ahead. Actually, it's uh, there's multiple names who apparently submitted this, but um, it's the first one that I need you oh, to no. to pay special attention to. I remember Shit, Game Revolution damn. actually. I only vaguely remember Game Revolution. Um, I remember they had a physical magazine, but that's about where that kind of begins and ends. 
for me. So I guess all of this got digitized at some point in time, and they they uploaded it there. Um, ah, there you son go. of a, a bitch. For you. Scott McCutcheon. <laughs> you should have known Scott McCutcheon. I <laughs> knew it would be that son of a bitch. <laughs> I. Uh, I went and picked up the thing video game the day it came out at EB Games, actually. Uh, and this was weird oh, wow. because, uh, surprise, I hadn't seen the movie before then. I had wow. not seen the movie when the game okay. came out. But for pre-ordering the game, which I was very prone to do back in the day with basically anything that sounded interesting to me, I got a DVD copy of the movie for free. That was a pre-order bonus. That's a good pre-order bonus. Wow. Yes. Shut up, Dalton. Uh, no one's talking to you. So, <laughs> and so um, this is a really long roundabout way of saying that Steven wins the category. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I know. So, Yay! So uh, here's the thing, though, Shannon, while I, I don't entirely disagree with you, the thing, it's, it's again, if I went strictly by the numbers, the thing has it, because Fireteam Elite is very good, uh, all things considered, and that, that um, what is the one that we were just talking, the survival Isolation. one? Isolation, thank you. Yeah. Um, all told, it's probably the best among all of these. I don't even know that it's better than the Thing game, but I have a really fond memories of the Thing game. I enjoyed playing it a lot. It was one of those games that that uh, I'm, I'm really honestly surprised, Shannon, that you never played it. Um, I am too. It's worth honestly. it's yeah. worth going back and messing around with if you can get your hands on a copy. I don't know if it's I'll it emulate it. Backwards it compatible on, on the Steam. Xbox. Yeah, dude, there you go, dude. I can emulate it on my uh, yeah. Steam Deck, Kaz. But it it really did some some kind of like <laughs> to borrow a term from the website name revolutionary stuff in a way. Um, I I found that trick and didn't know it was a thing you can do, and so I sent it to them. Uh, one thing you can do is like coerce because there's a trust meter, and you can coerce squad mates to do things for you even if they don't want to do them. If it gets to a point where they don't trust you, but you need them to unlock a door or do something for you, you can just aim your gun at them, and a couple seconds later they'll be like. All right, fine, and they'll do whatever you want, but you drastically lose trust with them. And if it goes too low, they'll turn on you as soon as you turn your back. So it's it's weird, and there's a lot of like it emulates the the movie in a lot of good ways. Like you really don't know who might be infected or what you might be fighting, along with the standard little minions and and you know fights and such. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. Um, and and Stephen Stephen absolutely one hundred percent tapped into that that fucking nostalgia. Whether he knew it or not, yeah. he hit me with yeah. it, and I was like, "Oh shit, that game really was good." Yeah, so, I'll accept it. I'll accept it. Also, also <laughs> for the record, he's got a book on his side. That's always going to be a, a yeah. cheat code for like, me. <laughs> I, after after I said it, I I thought to myself, "Why did you say that to this guy?" To me, why did you say that? I legit just kind of let that slip because, yeah, I mentioned it before the show, but I didn't mention in my argument. But I appreciate oh, that, Shannon. Man. Oh shit! All right, Steven. well, as as always, here's the important part. Even if it is one and one, even if it had been two and zero, oh, it all comes down to this: it's the head to head. All right, this is the final argument that you're going to make because we're going to issue closing arguments this time around too. The goal of this is to tell me how your chosen side of this argument would win in a fight. The rules are out the window. You're welcome to handle this any way that you want. You pick the setting. You pick the prep. You pick however it goes, and you do not have to adhere to what your opponent puts in play either. You might want to because you may want to pick it apart later, but for your specific argument, you set the rules. Make sense? Sound yeah. good? Yeah. Okay. All right. Shannon, you got five minutes on the clock whenever you're ready. So I really thought about this uh, actually quite a bit because I kept thinking to myself, man, I, f I don't know how I would win this because the thing's whole MO is that it can replicate whatever, you know, it comes across and uh, can just hide amongst them. And I thought to myself, okay, the obvious answer for me would be numbers. There's one thing, as far as we know, there was one thing and as we know from the Alien series is once you have one Xenomorph, you're going to have... They're like cockroaches. You got one, you got a hundred of them. It's like the brown recluses that live in my basement. If I see one of them running across the floor, he's got 700 cousins in the room next door. And it's the same thing with the Xenomorphs. There are so many of them that I feel like numbers-wise, they would... They, they would flank and they would destroy anything that threatens them. So the obvious answer is, well, but the thing can replicate a xenomorph. If it, if it gets a hold of it, it can pretend to be one. And that is true. But what I think, we don't know enough about the thing's abilities. 
when it comes to how they replicate and how they communicate because the xenomorphs are clearly a hive based mind and if something that replicates one of them can't you know follow through with that hive mind or something's weird they're going to get attacked and they're going to get destroyed by these creatures they're basically ants they're giant scary ants and not only that, but unlike every other thing that you see the thing come up against, you know, with the, the researchers and the scientists, xenomorphs have no sympathy. They have no, there, there's no way that you can make, like, give them the, the blurry eyed, oh, no, that's my friend. I can't hurt him. I, that, that's our buddy. We can't attack him. That's not true with the xenomorphs. They are just creatures. And they don't have any, you know, watch the movies, re- read the comics. As far as I know, there is no bonds between them. They are just there to to continue the species. And I think that if this, this thing were to somehow get inside and replicate one of them, that they would know that it is not one of them. And they would swarm it like ants at a picnic. And they would absolutely tear this thing apart piece by piece. The other thing to keep in mind is the thing does replicate, you know, other things. What would happen if a xenomorph were to somehow attach an egg, a a face hugger, to something that is currently replicated by the thing? We know that when aliens lay their eggs inside of something else's esophagus... Uh, and and they they birth this creature. It is always a hybrid of the alien and whatever it is that um, it, it infected. So you would have some sort of thing alien hybrid, of which I can't even fathom what that would be. You know, you've seen the pred alien, and that thing was badass. You've seen the dog alien from Alien Three. You've seen the giant bull aliens and stuff like that. But what would happen if? if there were multiple things or if, or if the thing had split apart, which is like, it seems like it can do, it can, it can, uh, you know, replicate multiple things at once. If one of those things got caught slipping, if the aliens knew that this thing wasn't one of them and they cocooned it and they laid an egg and they created their own hybrid of the thing slash xenomorph, the thing would be unstoppable. You've got an alien that can, that can potentially take the form of anything else that it wants. So now you're laying eggs and replicating things. If you really boil down to it, whether it's the numbers game or it's the uh, scientific way, I think the aliens have it. Or if you want to get really, 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 really specific, Ellen Ripley comes along to fight the xenomorphs. <laughs> she sees the thing. One of her main weapons is a goddamn flamethrower. And Ellen Ripley, who is the baddest of badasses, wipes out the thing for the aliens. And then she also kills the aliens. Also, did you know that the alien in the first movie's nickname was Big... Uh, was it Big Chap? I think is what it was. I just, I just to... assumed you were going to say Big Rabu. Big, ra- <laughs> Big Ragu. You have 30 seconds, by the way. It is, uh, it is Big Chap, by the way. And that's all I want to say. You can imagine a top hat and a monocle on that son of a bitch, and that's why he'd win. <laughs> All right, Steven, you've got five minutes on the clock whenever you're ready. Oh, man. Okay. Um, so I did like the way you kind of went with it, with uh, like the alien thing hybrid would just be unstoppable. That was the thing I was thinking. I was like, yeah, if the thing could replicate the alien in some way, it would just be that much better against it. But then you explained that hive mind mentality, which... I'm not that in like mo- I'm not that knowledgeable with the aliens uh, or the xenomorphs uh, in that franchise, so I wasn't aware of that issue. But you got to also remember the thing's ability was kind of explained, whereas a single cell from the thing can take over an organism. So it doesn't have to take the thing, the alien, right away. It just had to kind of get one cell on it, infect it. And then it just brings that back into the hive. And maybe, I don't know how the hierarchy works, maybe it like, reaches the queen at some point. And again, it can replicate uh, you know, human speech. It re- can replicate that knowledge that uh, whatever organism it had uh, before it. So it can also maybe perhaps replicate that hive mind control 
with the with the xenomorphs and so at that point like it's just the thing but instead of each thing being separate having its own goals its own ways to survive it's just one unit one entity that is just you know unstoppable at that point i would feel unless ripley shows up of course shannon (laughs) that's always the deciding factor is someone with a flamethrower gets to come along and ruin its day but that's my argument it doesn't have to take it over instantly it just has to have a sale sell and it just has to bring that back into the hive mind and at that point you how would it tell it's not part of that hive mind it can replicate it has that knowledge it has the it has the same biological uh makeup of whatever it takes over and my argument is that that's how it wins it doesn't overpower it it just makes it become one of them then i can see the rest of my time okay then we'll cut to cross exam five minutes before the both of you and that time is gonna start now steven you just won my argument for me thank you oh yeah yeah okay you are so for the uh for the thing to to replicate the alien it requires it it has to i mean it has to get in it right it has to take it over no right? it doesn't it has just, to just one cell well how would you get a cell from an alien though uh it doesn't have to be from the xenomorph it has to be from the thing blood saliva something has to get on it and if the thing goes after the uh if the if the alien the xenomorph goes after the thing that's how it takes it over but the alien's blood is made entirely of acid so I feel like yeah. anything that would try to to mess I mean anything that would try to mess with the alien in general would just dissolve wouldn't it I mean that's that's a I don't know. I honestly would not know. But, I mean, again, it's not have to be digested. The cell just has to get on the body and t- get in and take over the cells. I think we're also, maybe we're overlooking the fact that a- Ellen Ripley would probably kill all of them. <laughs> and it would be... Honestly, yeah, neither of us will win. It's just Ellen I'm just going to put Ellen Ripley point. down as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Ellen Ripley. Save everybody yeah. a lot of time here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if Ellen Ripley teamed up with uh, McCready, it would be game over for everybody. Oh god. That, that was the, Well, McCready's flamethrower will go had. out every two times he pulls the trigger, he has to get a new flamethrower. At least with uh Ripley, <laughs> it's just good the entire time. <laughs> I, I also I wish I had mentioned in the earlier part when we were talking about like the other stuff. I never mentioned any of the characters other than Ripley of if, if we're talking about a fight between the two and you've got, you know, McCready and all of the other idiots that were absolutely useless, except for Childs, of course, because Keith David's Child. a badass. Yeah. Um, but Wilford Brimley's not doing anything. Meanwhile, on the other side, you've got. Wilford Brimley was throwing an axe around the room. Well, first uh, off, trying to shoot people. First off, you called him Wilford Grimley. And then second, he was trying to shoot. <laughs> this to is shoot persona. His, he was trying to shoot. That's oh, his no. emo persona. No. He was That's trying to shoot his own people. But but with, with the aliens, man, you've got the entire colonial marines backing you up, killing the aliens. Fuck. Yeah, and see how well that turned out for him? <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd like to. Hunter, can I redo my argument from the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have three minutes. <laughs> I, I thought of a scenario that I dare not speak into existence because I don't want Steven to win. But at the same time, I can't not say this because it's such a good idea. So I'm just going to say it because I never care about winning or Do losing. It. If the yeah. Xenomorph took over a colonial Marine who then commanded the rest of the colonial Marines to just wipe <laughs> out the Xenomorphs, yeah, that'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Or if he took over Ripley, yeah, that'd be pretty good. But the aliens, Hunter, remember, they got this mouth that opens and then another mouth yes. shoots out. Yeah, he's got his little mouth. It's like a goblin <laughs> shark. Yeah. Okay, so you were saying the Xenomorphs took over the Colonial Marines? You're talking about the thing taking the, over the thing. The thing, yeah. Cause the, okay, okay. Because, again, the, Xenomorph, this, the, the thing is clever as hell. Like, it is super clever. It, it, yep. it is very tactical. Well, again, it takes it takes the knowledge and memories of whoever, whatever it assimilates. But, the, but the, whatever the little part, like, breaks off, it 
you know, like the blood, it just reacts on instinct. It doesn't have the mental capacity for that complex thinking. So again, it's all comes down to, uh, you know, I guess the size of the thing, like how smart it is at that point in time. Well, again, that's another. The aliens are not smart, but they are a cohesive unit. They attack as mm-hmm. one. You're, you're right. I don't think we know enough about whether or not the thing can replicate that hive mind. Because yeah, it 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 does get its like intelligence. But if a, I don't know, I don't know enough about the insect kingdom. If an insect, if an ant was taken over by one of those like larvae or those wasps that mind controls it, would the other ants know that it was under mind control, or would it, would they attack it, or would they carry on like nobody knows? I d- son of a bitch. I don't know, and I can't do it when Hunter is. <laughs> presenting oh god weird that's terrifying. pictures of I'm sorry, I, what is that I, that's an I ai picture for sure. mini to create emo wilford brimley and that's the <laughs> best thing can do i don't like it oh my god it looks like the thing won there <laughs> it looks like the, the thing th- kind of couldn't finish the job there it kind of oh. it kind of looks like the thing from marvel with wilford brimley's mustache and top hat <laughs> He says it's diabetes time. All it's, right, well, that's it's five done. minutes. It's done, um, Hunter. It's over. That's all, that's all so there is. So tell him, I don't care. Pull the plug. <laughs> I'll, I'll kill, kill you. <laughs> okay. Well, neither of you has made it easy on me, which is always fun. All right, I good. love that. Um, that's that that's always extremely argument. frustrating. Yeah. Uh, especially when I don't have a... a a preconceived notion going into this because I really like both of these franchises. I really think both so do of we. them yeah, <laughs> yeah. Could, can win well, honestly, in, yeah. in a reasonable situation. I, I feel like I feel like I needed more of a, you know, what's the setup? And like you said, I, ultimately, I don't think either of them, all oh, this feels bad. It feels like, wasn't the tagline for Alien versus Predator, Predator whoever wins, we lose? We lose. Wasn't yeah. that the tagline? That's what mm-hmm. I thought, yeah. That's kind of what this whole thing feels like. Um, here, here's the here's the ultimate takedown. Here, um, it's it goes back to quality versus quantity. I think. I think that's the the general argument being made here, and I think that's what I have to to go with. In that, the thing is, you both admitted very clever, very tactical, very capable of infiltration, but there are so many aliens and they do work and operate on a hive mind and they just keep coming and they never end. Um, Would it be able to split and replicate that many times? And that is the only reason because eventually the, the, what is it? The, the phrase on a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everything drops to zero. Um, it just doesn't seem like that's true for the xenomorphs, and this is why I have to give it to the xenomorphs. There's just there's just too many of them. There's just too many of them, and and hive mind or not, okay, you take them out on this planet, great, but there's gonna they're gonna be on in the next one, and there's gonna be more of them in that vent, and sixteen more around that corner, and they're just gonna keep coming. He's right, Stephen, um, you know it. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's a little painful, honestly, because in my in my head, it's the, the thing. Obviously, the thing wins. The thing is able to outsmart these humans all the way to the bitter end. The thing is the only one that ever wins in its own movie, which is what I was kind of hoping one of you would say, <laughs> Stephen. Um, well, but- <laughs> uh, yes and no. I mean, we don't I mean, know if he didn't fully Carpenter say me. like the canon ending is that he's definitely you know he's definitely one of the two of them, and and that shit goes down at the end. I thought he did. Uh, I don't think he had really said one of them was a thing, but he didn't say yeah. that they weren't. So yeah. that's very much well, like... Isn't the... Uh, it does widely believe that Childs isn't the thing, right? Because he has an earring, and you can see it, which would disqualify yeah. him from being the ear. So it would have to be McCready. Yeah, um, organic. Yeah. I but, think I think with the thing in Alien, by the way, I just want to mention that like up against anyone else, like any human... Either of them could very easily win, whether it be the numbers game or tactically. But against each other, it's a really hard fight because I really don't think we know enough about their species. We know what humans are capable of. We know what weapons do yeah, and all that stuff. Sure. But like aliens and the thing, man, they're they're just too mysterious. For all yeah. we know, you know, for all I know, Steven's right, and this thing would just get a hold of one alien and send the hive into, you know, insanity. Um, and for right. all Steven knows, the video games uh, from Alien are better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do know. 
So this, like I said, this this was, as I feel like we say on almost every episode of this show, you guys didn't make it easy for me, but ultimately I have to give this to the Xenomorphs. Um, it was tough. It was. I'm, I'm giving him the head-to-head, and so I'm, I'm actually going to pull on the, the two-to-one uh, thread here. Shannon, Shannon's got two going for him, and I've, I've got to give it to the Xenomorphs there. But for his first appearance, before we go any further, uh, a round of applause for yeah. Steven for his first appearance yeah. on Arguably Entertaining, because he did yeah. a hell of a job. He now knows how not easy this is. No, it's, it is um, not easy. It's, I would like to be judged at some point. <laughs> It's so intense. Yes, that'd be fun. Yes, please. It's not. <laughs> it's not. I'm fun. always looking to push that off onto somebody else so I can actually participate. Yeah, um, I'm down for that. So, guys, as always, thank you so much for joining us. The first, arguably entertaining in a long time, and hopefully more to come uh, in the very near future. We want to get this guy back on track at least once a month. I'd like to be doing this show. Uh, we basically took a lot of the summer off, but but we're back here. We do have a ton of great ideas for future episodes. I'm not going to read them all, but I've got a list in front of me that includes things uh, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, versus Scooby Doo. All right, I'm gonna, uh, you Sailor name Moon off. versus the Powerpuff Girls. You name them off. I'm going to tell you who would win immediately: <laughs> Buffy the Vampire right. Slayer, Sailor Moon. Okay. Um, uh, Calvin and Hobbes versus Bart Simpson. Bart Simpson. Bart Simpson. Fuck Calvin and Hobbes. Oh, all right. Well, I guess I know which one I'll be participating in next because it will one hundred percent be. I've got the box set of Calvin right behind me. Uh, Bill and Ted versus Wayne and Garth is another one. That Bill we and Ted. Thrown Bill out. and Ted. Uh, Scrooge McDuck versus C. Montgomery Burns. Oh, ooh. Uh, ooh I don't know that that's one. what I'm really anticipating a lot. I think Lindsay's going to have some strong opinions about yeah. that one, uh, and lots more. But you'll have to hear about those on a future episode of Arguably Entertaining. Until uh, uh, well, before we get out of here quickly, uh, tomorrow night, Shannon, we're back with PZ85 Plays. We're going to continue our adventures uh, in Barovia. The Curse of Strahd campaign is back on online uh, after a week's break. I will try my best to not be as obnoxious as I have been, and I'll message. <laughs> I'll go ahead and message Kaz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Wednesday we got an all new PWU we took last week's off uh, for, for some guy's birthday um, and fuck that guy <laughs> It was Bob. No, Piece of shit. Uh, and, and we've got a decent amount to talk about in the wake of that. Vince McMahon is out at WWE, which we talked about on the last episode we did. But a lot of changes, a lot of shakeups. John uh, Laurinaitis is since out. then. Uh, is uh, I thought he was dead. Unfortunately, not. Um, but we'll talk about that. A lot of staff changes over at WWE. A lot of just changes in general in the wrestling industry uh, lately. On Thursday, we got an all new. Uh, after dark pz85 after dark i don't know that Lindsay has said what the topic is supposed to be this week but i assume we'll find out very soon and then of course on friday it's not horse time because everyone has shit to do <laughs> so <laughs> it could not be, this week it could be horse time not for me but it, <laughs> maybe it, for you it could be but it's probably not you know probably not sometime in the near future but then we'll be back to it next week again maybe a new i want to believe we're kind of fingers crossed oh, for now definitely an all new i want to believe i have things <laughs> yeah to say we got to get to it about the conference Monday. yeah for now though we're gonna get out of here so for steven and for shannon i am your moderator and host double h this has been arguably entertaining and until next time good fight good night